Welcome to the Solid Signal Podcast for the week of March 17th, 2014. If you've just been aching to hear this podcast and you know it's already getting toward the end of the week, I have to apologize. We had some paid time off on the Solid Signal Podcast staff, so we weren't able to produce this earlier in the week as we usually do. However, uh, everybody's back now. Everybody's nice and refreshed, and so we've got a great perspective on things, and so let's get started. This week we're going back to basics, and it's because we've been getting a lot of questions down at Solid Signal about what you can do about rain fade and other signal strength issues with your dish. It seems like we've been getting a lot of people coming out of the woodwork with schemes to combine dishes or add one dish to another or stack LNBs or use some sort of strange amplifications that aren't designed for this sort of thing. And so I thought I would go back and address that and explain why you really don't need to do that 99% of the time. Signal strength issues, which manifest themselves, for example, on DirecTV with the 771 error, you know, really, they, they get you down. I get that. Especially it's a rainy day or a snowy day, and you just want to stay in and watch TV, and what happens? The skies get really dark, and hey, you get a satellite signal loss. It doesn't happen very often, but when it does happen, it's extremely frustrating. Even the folks at our West Coast Operations Center were saying that in the recent storm that they had there, there was even some rain fade in Southern California. The most common source of signal strength issues, though, is just simply not having the dish aimed properly. Oh, it may look like it is, or it may have been aimed properly when you first put it up, but the fact is things change, especially in harsh weather conditions when the wind can just push that dish a little bit out of alignment, so such a tiny little amount that you'll never even notice it. It's been brought up several times that if the dish is just one thirty-second of an inch out of alignment in one of its three measurements, you're actually missing the satellite's strongest beam by over 700 miles. So think about that. The first question is whether or not you're getting good signal on a bright, sunny day. And unfortunately, you can't really rely on your receiver for that, not for DirecTV or DISH. And that's because they use signal error rate measurements not signal strength measurements. The error rate of the signal really does determine how well you're going to get it, but it doesn't determine how strong that signal is to begin with, and the strength of the signal is really, really important for avoiding rain fade. If you don't have a good signal meter like Solid Signal's Sat Look Light, then you might want to consider picking one up. Yes, they are a couple of hundred bucks, but they will save you in a case like this because they'll let you see what your real signal strengths are, not just going through the receiver, which won't give you an idea of how to find the really strongest part of that signal. The professionals use a technique called dithering, and dithering means that with your signal meter hooked up, you move the satellite, just going a quarter of a turn at a time, and observing whether your signal strength goes up or goes down. If it goes down, start the other way, and then it'll start going back up again. Keep turning a quarter turn at a time until that signal strength starts going down again. And then turn it back a half turn to see if it's gone up again, and then back a quarter turn, and you should have very, very close to the correct location. This technique makes sure that you're hitting the exact center of the satellite beam, which is obviously where the strongest signal is going to be. A properly dithered dish is going to avoid rain fade problems about 99.5% of the time. Look, folks, if this is a hurricane or a tornado, especially if it's something where the wind is strong enough to move the dish, I make no promises. But in a case like that, you're not going to get a lot of help from some of these other techniques. I want to explain, when I say other techniques, some of the things that have been suggested to me lately that I've kind of had to very politely say, yeah, please don't do that. There have been several suggestions about taking the regular LNBs and shoehorning them onto a 1.2, 1.5, even 2 meter dish. For the most part, this doesn't work. Why? Because the focusing of the dish is very, very precise, and without a lot of measurements and a good knowledge of physics, you're not going to know exactly how far in to put that LNB to get the best possible result. Yes, in a perfect world that would work, but you just don't have the tools required to measure it the way you need to. Another thought was to try to use a single dish for each satellite, single one meter dish. And you know what? This actually does, it does work. 
It worked because I've seen it myself at DirecTV's Los Angeles Broadcast Center. However, the problem is you're not going to be able to get those LNBs that are required for the 99 and 103 satellites for DirecTV. It's a little bit easier for DISH because all the LNBs are essentially the same. It's just a matter of aiming them. But for the most part, this doesn't work. It requires a variety of different combiners and custom things that you're just not going to be able to pick up even at a specialty location like Solid Signal. I should also say, for gosh sakes, don't use that Alaska and Hawaii dish that's indicated for DirecTV, the 1.2 meter dish. First of all, you will spend about $300 to get the two reflectors and two sets of L&Bs that you'll need, plus all the mounts, which you're probably going to have to, to drill into concrete because these things are gigantic and heavy. And when it comes right down to it, the beam size on each is not really that much bigger than it is with a regular slimline dish, these dishes are designed to get signals that travel sideways. If you think about it, that's what you get in Alaska and Hawaii. They are not designed to give you stronger signals if the satellite is relatively close to right up above you. If you're serious about avoiding rain fade and making sure your signal is nice and strong, you can do what the professionals do and add a trunk amplifier and polarity locker between the dish and the multi-switch. This doesn't necessarily work with those single-line swim dishes from DirecTV, but with all other sorts of dishes, it will work. Putting the polarity locker in place first is going to power the dish separately from powering the multi-switch, and it's also going to give only one kind of signal through each of those four lines, which means that gives you the effect of having a four times stronger signal, even though the signal strength is exactly the same. A trunk amplifier, like Sonora's LA144-RT, is going to give you even more ability to go from the dish to the multi-switch with a stronger signal from one point to another. There's a separate amplifier bolted to the multi-switch, so you don't need to amplify beyond that point for the most part. However, having a trunk amplifier in place is going to make sure that you have the strongest possible signal, especially important if there's about 200 feet between your dish and your multi-switch. So let me bottom line this here for you folks. You don't need to go with fancy schemes that involve machining and custom drilling and custom fitting and custom electronics. Make sure your dish is properly pointed and if you're still having problems putting in an amplifier and polarity locker will solve most of them. Any problems you have beyond that honestly that's the kind of weather that you're never going to be able to fight. And so, folks, this podcast has run hilariously long as usual. I do apologize, but I'll get off quickly by saying I'll see you next time.